Tuesday night, the Los Angeles Lakers opener against the Minnesota Timberwolves. LeBron and Bronny made history by being on the court together. Such a special moment. They became the first father-son duo in NBA history to appear in a game together when they checked in with four minutes left in the second quarter in Crypto.com Arena erupted. The Lakers also getting the win in their first game under new head coach, our guy J.J. Redick, 110-103 versus the T-Wolves. Let's hear from the James gang. Going up to that score set with my dad, checking in for the first time. That's a, that's a crazy moment I will never forget. You know, for me, I, I lost a lot of time because of this league and committing to this league, being on the road at times, missing a lot of his things, Bryce's things, Zuri's things. So to be able to have this moment where I'm working still and I can work alongside my son, it's uh, one of the greatest gifts I've ever got from the man above, and I'm going to take full advantage of it. Oh, God, I love that moment. What a day. Look who's here. Yes. My guy, oh, Perk. We got both of them. We got oh, wow. Wendy. I got Mad Dog. I got Stephen A. I mean, how'd a girl get so lucky? All right, Wendy, you know LeBron very well. You followed him very closely your entire career. How special was this moment? <clears throat> so 20 years ago, LeBron was 20 when Bronny was born. And one of the things that uh, I'm having a difficult time coping with is that when LeBron was 20 years old, he became a father, which, God, it seems young now, man. I mean, back then, I, 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 didn't, I couldn't understand it. He was already one of the top 10 players in the league at age 20. He was the top 10 player in the league. Mm -hmm. Go back and look at the stats from his second year. He was an all-star his second year. He was already the face of a franchise. Everything that the Cleveland Cavaliers did was built around LeBron James at age 20. And to think about that that's where his son is at the same age, like, I'm having a difficult time coping with the last 20 years, and I'm sure LeBron is too. But here's what I think is important to realize when it comes to this. If you're a father, you're going to have a, you're going to feel a certain way about your son being with you. What the Lakers are doing here is trying to get the most out of LeBron. This is an investment, not just in history. It's an investment on engaging and energizing your franchise player at age 39. And I think it's working. LeBron is completely engaged and energized, and I think J.J. Redick is making a very smart move, totally leaning into this, totally embracing this, setting this up and making it happen, and it's not going to define the season. I don't even know if it's going to define this week for the Lakers, but it's going to be so important to their franchise player. Go ahead, Perk. No, go ahead. Go ahead, my man. Go ahead. I can't wait to hear you speak. Go ahead. <laughs> I want to hear you on this. You know what? Look, let me say this. This is not, this moment, the moment that we witnessed last night is not about whether or not Bronny belongs in the NBA or what his future is going to look like in the NBA. This was a moment for the James family, the NBA family, um, all former players, current players that have sons, right? And, and you, think about, you think about what Bronny has been through. He almost lost his life, what, about a year and a half, two years ago. Mm -hmm. He almost lost his life. And I just think about what Braun said post-game, uh, in his post-game interview, when he talked about him missing a lot of time with not being around because of the dedication and the sacrifice that he put into his craft. Stephen A., I didn't I saw you uh, on air about what three weeks ago talking about, you know, how your family is so mad at you because you dedicate and you put so much time into your craft. That's why you Stephen A. Smith, damn it. And that's why he's LeBron James. But to see them just shared the floor uh, last night together for two and a half, you know, three minutes. It was a, it was a beautiful thing to see. And, you know, I, I, I played with Braun. I've been part of this journey with him. Through AAU, we played on the Soldiers together from, you know, being in the McDonald's All-American game together, from being in the same draft to even playing on the same team with the Cavs towards the tail end of my career. So it was definitely a special moment to witness and very proud moment, and I'm happy for the, for the James family and everybody involved. Go ahead, doggy. All right, now listen. I know you guys are going to, and I love you, Ken Kendrick, nice to see you again. How are you? Okay, things good, <laughs> Wendy? I love it. Call the government name. Uh, uh, Wendy, we had Wendy on radio, by the way, during the Wendy had Wendy on? Yes, we did. Oh. Wendy was nice enough to come on when he was in Paris. He did a great job. I wanted to say that. But, but, let's calm down. Nobody in America, this might be fun for LeBron. Nobody in America cares that Bad Bonnie dog. James played three minutes and grabbed one rebound and a, at 11 o'clock at night in the opener, and this is supposed to be a, a moment that America is going to resonate with. 
I mean, come on. I'm, I'm being serious now. And I, and I love the kid, all right? Hard, we know we had the major issue at USC. And, I, and LeBron's great. He's an all-timer. He's always been a phenomenal player. He stays out of trouble. Who doesn't like LeBron? I mean, he's not Jordan, but who doesn't love LeBron? Everybody loves LeBron. I can't but believe But to make right a now. big deal, because J.J., and I love Redick. I'm rooting for him hard here. Yeah, me But too. the idea that he put him in for three minutes, he grabbed the rear, a couple of shots, and this is the greatest moment in professional sports. Mad I mean, dog. we got to be serious. They this made is... history. Well, it's Ken LeBron Griffin Jr. James. and Ken, Ken Griffin yeah, Jr. and Ken NBA, Griffin made history. He's one of the greatest players of all time. Uh, the ultimate dream realized playing alongside his son well, in the me... iconic purple and right. gold. Can I ask you a question? Sure. If LeBron James is not the second greatest player in the history of basketball, would this be a story? It would be a story, but not nearly as well, big. Well, this is, this is a story LeBron. because we're making, Bron we're making LeBron... You know, you can make the argument that the Lakers got Bronny to begin with to, as Wendy just said, to energize LeBron. So that puts a qualification on it. Well, hold on now. He's only on the team because LeBron's 40. He's their star. So as a result, that's, that's a second-round pick. Three minutes. Let's throw him out okay. there. Sorry, folks. Guys. I ain't buying it. You Stephen guys A., go crazy. nothing's Call me an more older. important than Call family. Call me anything you want. I can't get into it. Go ahead, Stephen. Stephen A., let me hear. Look, y'all. <clears throat> oh my goodness! I hate doing this. Oh God! Wendy, Wendy, and Kendrick Perkins are absolutely right, particularly from the LeBron standpoint. LeBron, to me, is the second greatest player in the history of basketball. He deserves this. This is what he wanted. It's what he's always wanted. He deserves this. Wendy was absolutely right about the Lakers being all in on LeBron. And what can you do to soak as much out of him as you possibly can to have him even more inspired? He's a billionaire. He's a four-time champion. He's been to 10 NBA Finals. He's a surefire first ballot future Hall of Famer. He's on a Mount Rushmore. And it's very, very important, the point that you pointed out, Wendy, because they are all in. And it's very smart of J.J. Redick. Let's call it what it is. He wouldn't be a head coach for the Los Angeles Lakers if it wasn't for LeBron James, okay? We all know this. And I believe in J.J. Redick. I think he's going to do a great job. I'm never rooting against him. I'm rooting for him. But that's the fact, okay? So we got that out the way. Now we get to Bronny. And Kendrick Perkins, I'm going to say this. And the reason I say this is primarily because of you. Because you were one of the people that reminded me of this which buffers Doggy's point. Bronny James was a McDonald's All-American. There were questions as to whether or not he deserved that. On the collegiate level, his health compromised the level of production he could have given. That was compromised. He ended up getting drafted 55th overall. What's the problem with that? The problem with it is not the draft pick at 54, 55 because you had people interested in going and grabbing him earlier mm -hmm. just out of respect for LeBron James. They didn't grab him earlier. So it's not the problem with him being picked at 55. The problem was the money he got compared to what the 55th pick got the year before that. Knowing that the Lakers were in a compromising position financially, still in all, they got that money for him in a fashion that wasn't going to happen or has never happened for the 55th pick in a draft. Prior to that. So there's a whole bunch of things that have gone on that have sort of facilitated the situation that happened last night. And anybody who's watching the sport, who knows the sport, who loves LeBron James, who loves the Lakers, but also loves the game of basketball, is going to have a bit of trepidation. I'm here in Los Angeles with the both of y'all. We have all run across people in the streets of L.A. who are diehard fans of Laker of the Lakers they are a part of Laker Nation they didn't like this some of them didn't like this at all now that crowd last night loved it we all loved I was there we all loved it when Bronny and LeBron walked into the game together it was a magnificent moment to see no question about that but because so much has happened to facilitate that moment transpiring last night inevitably is going to invite the level of scrutiny that Doggy has pointed out Doggy is right on the money in terms of what a lot of people throughout America are feeling. And last night moment, I th it was a great, great thing to see for LeBron. It was special for LeBron. But from this point, from this point forward, it's going to be more about Bronny and what Bronny is, what's he going to be, what he can be, and what happened to facilitate him being in this position. And that's going to invite a whole bunch of scrutiny, so much so 
that doggy would look mute compared to the level of scrutiny that's about to come I'm down the pipe that, in the months to come. I'm dog is such a, an admirer of history. Uh, I'm surprised they don't. he doesn't do anything for you for the his, history moment. Talk about people in the street. I just ran into Ken Griffey Jr. in the hotel lobby yep. at 5.45 in the morning. Yes. He thought it was an amazing moment last yeah. night. Yes. He was talking about how much he and his dad enjoyed it. I was reminiscing with him. He came to LeBron's first ever home game back in 2003. He can't believe the 20... Two years later, this is happening. Like, dog, what about the history of the moment? Regardless of all the other details, don't you just appreciate the history? I appreciate you're, you're it for Lamont, history. Wendy. Uh, and I, we got to let Kendrick talk here, too. I'm sure he's mad at me. I appreciate <laughs> that from a LeBron's <laughs> perspective. But Ken Griffey Jr. was the next Willie Mays, and yes. everybody knew it. Kendrick, Ken Griffey Sr. was a 300 hitter on two great all-time teams, Cincinnati Reds. He, they were both great. The, the junior was better, but Ken Griffey Sr. was great. LeBron's an all-timer. Bronny James, to me, based on his collegiate career, based on the fact that he's LeBron's son, and, that's, and we're going to placate LeBron, the idea that he's playing three minutes, I can argue whether he should even be on a team. He should be in the G League, which, by the way, is what Shaq and Barkley said last night, that he shouldn't be on. He should be on the G League to get minutes. The Both of them said that on TNT. So, to me... This, it just feels fake. It feels like, all right, let's give Bronny his three minutes. We'll put him in late in the game. J.J. making sure it's a big family moment. We can all give him a standing ovation. We'll get the grippies there. It's not a sports moment. To me, there's a fakeness to it. It's great for LeBron. And if that's the idea, fine. I'll give you that. But from a sports fan's perspective, I don't think anybody is walking around. A sports fan. Not an old white guy like me. A sports fan. I don't think anybody's walking around America saying, wow, did you see that Bronny James played with his father last night? That is not the, that's not, not happening. You can say it is, but that's a cocoon. What? That is not happening. Why yeah. is Let's it fake? It because you think that just because he's Bronny James, it's yeah, the only reason he's yes. in this position? I mean, Do you yes, think it's like agree. a nepotism type thing? And I don't, so, I understand yeah. why. He's great. LeBron, you throw him a bone, make him energized. Wendy made a great point. I have Doggy. no problem with that theme. No, let, let, let him go. No, no, Let go, go. go ahead. No, no, I want you to go. go the only problem I have with Doggy today is that he's called me Kendrick three <laughs> times since we've been on air. Okay. Okay, that's the big number perk. one. Big it's perk. Big, perk. Perk. big Big perk. fella or perk, okay? You get that understood, Doggy. I'm actually not that far. I'm not dead against you on your on what you're, what you're saying. Here's the point. A lot of people feel that way because they feel as if Bronny was given this opportunity and it wasn't earned. And we could go back to the McDonald's All-American game. We could go back to his numbers in high school. He averaged 14 points, I believe it was, in high school. We can go look in the history of the McDonald's All-Americans, and no one has ever averaged 14 points and gotten to the McDonald's All-American game. Stephen A. is right. This moment was about LeBron James. Do you think, last night, this was a moment where J.J. Reddick said, you know what, let us get this out the way early. So I don't have to deal with this for the rest of the season. And now we could let Bronny go on his journey. Once the G League get up and going, he's going to go down there in the G League. He's going to go down there and develop. And now J.J. Reddy could go on with what he needs to do, and that's focusing, focusing on coaching the Los Angeles Lakers.